What's going on? DSP here, and welcome to Release Day Unboxing for April 19th, 2011. And today, I'm very excited. It's one of the rare days uh, during this year when we have multiple retail releases on the same day. And almost inexplicably, there are four today. I kid you not. It's not like there's two and you have to pick between which ones you want. There's four games. And... There's a couple things. There's I've actually been thinking about it this week. Why would why would these game companies be doing this? Release so many games on one day. And I did I did a little bit of research and I realized, well, the truth be told, none of these games are from the same publisher or the same development studio. Okay? Most of these games are completely different genres of game. You've got a first-person shooter with motion control on the Wii. You've got a fighting game. You've got a third-person shooter with motion control on the PS3. And you've got a puzzle game. So, yeah, technically they are all different games. But what I've always thought is, here's my line of thinking being a gamer. Let's say I wanted all of these games, okay? But the bottom line is, you cannot play all of these games at the same time. And, you know, I'm going to do the unboxing now and show everyone the games, but the bottom line is, even me, I'm doing this as a job, as an occupation, and I can't play all these games at once. In fact, as I'm going to explain as we go through these, I'm only going to play two of these games today. Probably I'm only going to play two of these games tomorrow. Some of these games I won't even get to until maybe the weekend. Who knows? So... If I were a gamer and I was picking and choosing which games to buy, this would be a horrible strategy for a game, say, like Conduit 2. Because unless I only own a Wii, chances are Mortal Kombat, SOCOM 4, or Portal 2 are bigger releases than Conduit 2, for you anyway. And if you have to choose, you're probably going to choose one of these three over this game. So it really is a bad decision by these studios to be releasing these games on the same day. I really think that they should space it out more. But that was just my personal opinion on the subject. So anyway, getting into it, what do we have today? First of all, we do have Conduit 2, which uh, is a Wii exclusive first-person shooter game. This is the sequel to the very popular Conduit 1 uh, from a couple years back, and a lot of people have been anticipating it. Some people say that Conduit 1 was pretty much the best FPS game on the Wii, that it was even better than Call of Duty and the like. So I'm interested to try this out. Now, as you can see, it's the limited edition, which basically means you bought the game new. And it actually, this is the first Wii game I have that says it's compatible with Wii Motion Plus. See, it says it right there. All the other games I've played so far for my Wii don't, didn't use it. So I have Wii Motion Plus, and I haven't been able to use it because no games use it. So it should be interesting to see how effectively this game uses it. So here you go on the back, the Wii Shooter Unleashed. Uh, limited edition, what do you get? You get unlockable gold destroyer armor. You get unlockable Eye of Ra ASE. And no, I don't know what the fuck ASE stands for. I guess we'll find out. An exclusive Conduit 2 Art of the Game 44 page art book. And yes, that is true. Uh, and I was looking on here to try to figure out how many people you could play online, and uh, it says 12 players, so it's a little bit more limited than on other consoles, but it is nice that it does have uh, a, a robust online mode. It also does have split-screen co-op for offline, if people do want to do co-op. So what do you get? You get your typical Weed game disc, Conduit 2, here's your instruction booklet. Black and white, but it's actually in-depth, it talks a lot about the game, so that's nice, and then you get a pretty neat 44 page art book with full color art of all different things from the game's development which is a nice addition for them to toss in there you know for free the only problem is like I said who the fuck cares about Conduit 2 we've got three other games that everyone's been waiting for for quite a long time and unfortunately this game is gonna fly by the wayside because it's just, this game was supposed to come out months ago and if they had stayed to their development schedule and this game came out months ago, I get the feeling a lot more people would have bought it. But now they have pretty much killed themselves by releasing this game the same day as these other three. This, this reminds me of last year when Vanquish came out the same exact day as Fallout New Vegas. And Vanquish, for all intents and purposes, got great reviews. If you look at the review scores for the game, everyone said, wow, outstanding. It's a third-person action game. There's nothing like this on the market now. Sega did a real good job. And then you look at the sales numbers, and you say, what happened? And the answer is, you fucking released your game the same day as one of the most anticipated games of the year. 
And that's what's happening right now with Conduit 2. You've got the reboot of Mortal Kombat, which people have been waiting for for quite some time. We've had a decade of shit Mortal Kombat games as the series went into 3D and lost its, its competitive edge as a competitive fighting game and instead kind of gave in to graphics and gimmicks rather than actual quality gameplay. You've got SOCOM 4, which people have been waiting for for quite some time because the last SOCOM that came out on PS3, not many people liked. People have played the beta of this game and say this looks like a kind of a reboot and it looks a lot better. And then Mortal, or uh, Mortal, Portal 2, which also is an extremely highly anticipated game. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's a puzzle game. But anyway, Mortal Kombat. So... To answer a lot of the questions, first of all, I got it for both systems, 360 and PS3. Yes, it is true that you only get Kratos on PS3, and there is no 360 exclusive character. So the PS3 did get a giant coup there. I mean, if I had a choice, if I could only buy it for one console, I would have bought it for PS3. And incidentally, I actually reserved the only the PS3 version, and uh, because of that, I got a, a uh, code from GameStop to get the classic Scorpion skin and also his classic fatality. However, they couldn't get it, give it to me for the 360. I, you know, the guy was actually trying to hook me up. He said, "Dude, did you buy so many games? Uh, let me see if I can get it for you for the 360." And the, 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 his computer would not allow him to print me the code because I didn't pre-order it. So, unfortunately, I'm only going to get that stuff on the PS3, not on the 360. Obviously, the version that I'm going to be playing the most is the PS3 since I'll have another character. It's just a no-brainer. So, uh, yeah. So that's Mortal Kombat. So let's take a look. Just to, and this is going to answer your rumors because there's been a lot of rumors about this. You're going to see right away when I open this sucker up. Combat Pass. Yes, Mortal Kombat has a pass, an online pass, to play the game online. And if you don't have the pass, you cannot play the game online without purchasing one uh, for, I believe it's 10 to $15. I think it's $10. But it was funny because John Rambo was over here the other day, uh, on Saturday actually, and we were on Xbox Live, and... Just to show you, on Xbox it's the same, another combat pass, as you can see, only it's orange on the Xbox 360. And uh, we were looking on Xbox Live, and you could buy the combat pass ahead of time before the game was even out. And John said, now how stupid is this? Because how many kids, you know, or, or, or people who don't understand the whole combat pass concept are going to go on there and think, oh, look, Mortal Kombat's out. And they went and bought it. For ten to fifteen dollars, whatever the price was, and then they realized, oh shit, this wasn't the game. This is a pass to play the game online. And since I'm, I'm buying the game next week anyway, I'm already going to be able to do that. I just wasted ten dollars, and uh, there are no refunds on Xbox Live. So I don't know if they did the same thing on PSN. I would assume that they did, that it was available early. But how fucking stupid is that? Like, why would you put the online pass out for a game that's not retail released yet? It just doesn't make sense. Unless they were anticipating that some people would get the game early. But if that's the case, why do you get mad at people who break street day? I don't know. But anyway, uh, so that's the deal here. And what you see, it's kind of interesting. You get your game disc on both systems. Your combat pass. Your instruction booklet. Where do you see this? This is your instruction booklet. You've got your warnings about photosensitivity and epilepsy on the left. You've got... Getting started on the right, which tells you how to start a game on PS3. Then you've got information on online combat, and then you've got the credits. There's no instructions. There's absolutely no instructions for Mortal Kombat. Uh, I call it Mortal Kombat 9 because it really is Mortal Kombat 9. Regardless of if they want to say that they're rebooting the, the series, the game is Mortal Kombat 9 because as you'll see when we start the story, it actually continues from the last Mortal Kombat game. So fuck them if you think you want to call it Mortal Kombat 9. That's like calling the next... Uh, you know, the next movie, Rocky. Wait a minute. You can't call it Rocky. You already have a Rocky, you know? So fuck that shit. But anyway, um, Mortal Kombat, that's what you get. And then the last thing, actually, which I didn't show you, they say a Mortal Kombat catalog with a K. Boy, aren't they clever. And uh, what this does is it shows you a bunch of Mortal Kombat merchandise you can buy. They show the collector's edition of the game, the tournament edition of the game that came with the joystick, some new t-shirts that have just been designed, a hat that's been designed, some posters that you can get. Uh, they show the joystick again. The two horrendous movies, even though the first movie I did like, the second movie was a piece of fucking fetid, disgusting fecal matter. Uh, the soundtrack for the game, which apparently actually has some real music from real artists. And then the two strategy guides. And then on the back, 
Mortal Kombat the Digital Series, which, by the way, is already out. It's Mortal Kombat Legacy, I believe, uh, which uh, it was already released last week uh, over on Machinima. So if you haven't seen that, I saw the series. I liked the first episode, and the trailer looks really promising. So if you want to go check that out, feel free. Okay? So, just to remind everyone... Mortal Kombat, all this footage, I am I'm going to start playing it today, and today is launch day, April 19th. That footage will be over on DSP Street Fighter, because that is my fighting game channel, okay? So all the footage for this game, look for it on DSP Street Fighter. And I might not jump online today, but what I might do is test out a lot of the offline stuff, probably play through the story mode, probably see what stuff is unlocked or, you know, what's available to start, and do that kind of stuff today. And then maybe tomorrow, I'll do some... Uh, gameplay with John Rambo. Just so everyone knows, I know previously I said John Rambo was going to be here today. He cannot make it today. He's coming tomorrow. And so what this means is that, well, I guess we'll do Portal 2 next. I'll show you Portal 2. Uh, Portal 2, I will be beginning today the single player campaign. I'm not sure how far I'm going to get considering the game is probably difficult, just like Portal 1 was. Portal 1, I would say I probably got about 75 to 80 percent through it pretty easily. You know, a couple, a couple brain twisters, but after you get the hang of the game, you can pretty much figure out most of the puzzles. But then at the end, it got fucking insanely hard. Like, if you didn't understand some of the mechanics of gravity, of physics that were going on in the game, you would just would not be able to figure out. So there was, I remember there was this one puzzle, you had to go, like, fall down this, this corridor, or this, uh, this pit, and land in a portal, and then use your momentum to come out of the ceiling and then make another portal under you while you were still flying in midair so that you could launch off the wall and go across this giant chasm and land on a ledge way the fuck high up. And I was like, I, I didn't even know there was a ledge up there. So I didn't even know where to go. You know, when I was first playing this stage, I had no clue where I was supposed to go. And I remember spending uh, hours trying to figure out what the fuck do I do. And I admit, I finally I did have to, to kind of look it up and say, where am I supposed to be going? And then I realized there was a ledge way the fuck at the top of this, this corridor I was in. And that's where I was supposed to go. And that's when I was able to figure it out. So, I have no doubt that this game is going to be just as tricky, if not trickier, than the first one. But that's going to be good. Because that's kind of that's what makes the game fun. It's it's original and it's it's a. Uh, I'm glad that it's getting a full console or a release and a full retail release rather than just being a part of like the orange box. Um, now what I will be doing is today I will do the single player campaign. Some tomorrow when John Rambo is here we will begin the multiplayer campaign. It's it's two player co op, and we will do that as much as we can. Um, and then we're also going to play some Mortal Kombat. Uh, so I can finally get some matches against, you know, a human. We'll, we'll mess around with the game a little bit. John actually said he's getting Mortal Kombat, so he might even have the game already by tomorrow and know some stuff about the game, too. And uh, so we're going to do that tomorrow. But today, single-player Portal 2, single-player Mortal Kombat. Portal 2 will be on DSP Gaming. Mortal Kombat will be on DSP Street Fighter. So Portal 2. Over the past couple weeks, there was all these rumors flying yet again around Portal 2. Uh, why would you buy one version over the other? And the, 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 uh, the, the, the truth is that, yes, the rumor is true. You get a full version of Portal 2 for the PC when you buy it for PS3. Absolutely 100% correct. I bought it, and it says right there you get it. And inside, as I'll show you, you do get a code, which I'm not going to show you, obviously. But you basically can play it on PS3 and on PC, and the game... Is console crossover compatible? By the way, the instruction book is very short, but it's actually in color and it's nicely designed, which is pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, if you have a friend who has the game for PC, you can actually do the co-op campaign with them if you have it on PS3 or vice versa, which is pretty neat. And if you have a, a PC that can handle the game, you can play it on the PC for the same price as having it on PS3. So it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, the way I think of it is... If you were going to play this on PC, fucking buy the PS3 version anyway. Because then, you can get it on the PC, and you can fucking trade in the PS3 version. So get you, you're basically, you're getting the game for half price, right? I mean, that's kind of what I'm figuring. But anyway, uh, the reason that this is possible is because uh, if you were following along E3 last year, one of the major announcements from Valve was that uh, Steam is now on PS3, and actually this game allows you to sign up for Steam on PS3 or link your existing Steam account from your PC to your PS3, and uh, that's how you're able to play cross-platform, which is pretty neat. 
And there's pros and cons to this. I think the pros are if you have friends who have it for PC, or if you're a PC gamer and you have friends who have it for PS3, that's obviously a plus. Personally, it doesn't affect me in that regard. The other cool thing is people are saying that in the future there will be a lot of mods for the game, a lot of user-created content and things like that that's usually released through Steam. Um, that's all well and good, but bottom line, there's so many games that come out this year. I doubt I'm ever coming back to Portal 2, you know what I mean? Once I beat the campaign and I beat the, the co-op campaign, why would I come back to play user-created levels? That would be like dropping everything and not playing new content to go and play Little Big Planet levels. I, it doesn't make sense to me. If this were one of the few games you were buying this year, then I could see. Sure, it has a value to it, but for me, it really doesn't have much value. But it was funny because I thought, I swear, I thought I reserved the Xbox 360 version, but apparently I, uh, I reserved the PS3 version, and that's the one he gave me. So we've got that. That'll begin today. And then last but not least, certainly not least, SOCOM 4, as you can see there, U.S. Navy SEALs. Uh, compatible with the PS Move, and as I've already said earlier uh, this week, when I play SOCOM 4, I will be using this son of a bitch right here, this big daddy, that's right, it's the, uh, the PlayStation Sharpshooter, and it'll be the first time I'm attempting to use it, and it'll make, uh, it'll hopefully make it a lot easier to play this game with the PS Move, because I tried to do it on the beta, and it was really wonky, like, I couldn't aim at anything, but... I think it was because of the way you were pointing. I hopefully with the sharpshooter, since it's like holding a gun, it'll be a lot easier to play. But I guess we'll see what happens there. But uh, so here you are, SOCOM 4. And the other cool thing is you get multiplayer beta access for Resistance 3 inside, which is pretty neat. And uh, when you open the sucker up, here it is, Resistance 3 multiplayer beta. And the code's on the other side, so obviously I'm not going to show it to you. But they're not sure when the release date is yet which has been pretty typical for all the betas that I've gotten this this year so far. They're not sure exactly what the date is, but they give you the website to go check it out. And then here's your instruction booklet. Pretty in-depth. Gives you all the different layouts for what, you know, what you're using. This is cool that it has the whole layout for the, uh, the sharpshooter, so I'll know what I'm doing when I try to play it. And, uh, all right, black and white, which kind of sucks, but what else are you going to do? And that's it. That is, uh... That is what you get with SOCOM 4. So, basically today, Portal 2 and Mortal Kombat, single player, offline. Tomorrow, you'll see co-op gameplay of both of those games with John Rambo. There's a possibility that I may go online with Mortal Kombat by the end of the week. I'm um, not sure. I mean, there might be so much content that I'm busy just playing the game, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, then I do want to try SOCOM 4, so ho I'm hoping by, like, Friday... I have some time. I've done enough in these games that I can move on to SOCOM 4 and test that game out online and see how it is. You know, like I said, I played the beta. I sucked at it. I was absolutely horrible at the game, but I did like the game. So if I get better at it and if maybe the controls are a little bit better with the sharpshooter, we'll see how I do there. Poor Conduit 2 is the black sheep here, like I already mentioned. I mean, the poor game, I, I feel bad because I get the feeling the game is good. From what I've seen in reviews, they're saying the campaign is pretty decent. The online is, is improved from the last game. It's not, it's not the best game on the market, obviously. It's not like the best FPS game. But it is probably, once again, one of the best, if not the best, FPS game on the Wii. And, uh, and so I did really want to give it a, a good shake, and I will eventually. I just don't know when the hell I'm going to get to do it this week. Because I'm sorry, but the other three games are just much larger releases, in my mind at least. And uh, I get the feeling a lot of people want to see those games over Conduit too. The good news is that next week, there's no new releases whatsoever. The only thing that really comes out next week, there's two things. There's the Go Gears of War 3 beta, which has its a next week of content, which means that it's going to unlock a new game mode and new maps, supposedly. So right now, the Gears of War 3 beta is just Team Deathmatch on two maps, as you saw if you watched the gameplay that I put up yesterday. Uh, and so there's really no reason to go back to it once you've played it several times. However, next week, if new stuff's unlocked, I will definitely try that out. And then also, you know, we're anticipating that next week, the next episode of Back to the Future on the PS3 will be released. And uh, if that's the case, I will definitely be playing through that one. Uh, and besides that, there won't be anything, any new retail releases. And so that'll give me some time to maybe dive into Conduit 2 and to put more significant time into things like SOCOM 4, Mortal Kombat, etc. So, holy shit, four retail releases in one day. What a day it's going to be. What a, day, a week it's going to be. 
Uh, and I'm excited. It's, you know, after two basically dry weeks with not a heck of a lot going on, we have a massive release day unboxing video, and we got all this new content coming up. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. DSP Gaming, like I said, you're going to see Portal 2 today. And then over on DSP Street Fighter later today, you're going to see some Mortal Kombat. So check it out.